have to make sure that when it comes to spiritual matters that our eyes are open and that our ears are open and that we're listening or we will miss something. And I know that's a cute little story about the, the people on the bus because everybody thinks you're going to say, well, how many people are on the bus? And that wasn't the question. The question was, how many times did the bus stop? And so we get to thinking about something and we may miss the whole point. I want us to understand today that worship is not something that just happens. Worship is something that you have to participate in and experience. You become a part of it. The question is not, what am I going to get out of worship, but what am I going to put into worship? We need to make sure that when we come here that we do participate, that we listen in Sunday school, that we listen to the message, that we sing the songs, that we participate and listen to somebody when they're praying that we fellowship together, and then we have our eyes open and our ears open because that's the only way we're going to hear the message that God has prepared for us. Don't come with any preconceived ideas of what we're going to get or looking for somebody to tell you something in particular. Come and listen and participate. And I would encourage all of us to do that so that we do have a part in the worship experience. Let's have our prayer circle. Father God, we give you thanks for the blessings that we have. We thank you so much for our children, and we pray, Father, that as they grow, that they would grow not only physically and mentally, but they would grow spiritually, that they will open their eyes and ears to be receptive to your word. We thank you for our time together. Bless us as we continue to worship, for we ask it in your name. Amen.
Y'all sing along with us. This is new. The verse is. Have you ever waited for anything? Are you waiting on anything? How many know that God has put down in your heart situations where you have to wait? For instance, a very common verse is hunger and thirst for righteousness. How many know that's waiting? Well, I feel like one of the things that happens in a person's life when they come they get closer to God in prayer and they're serving Jesus and they're searching for more of him. One of the things God creates a greater desire in their hearts. And I want to share, I, this started out sort of as a sermon, but it's going to turn into sort of a series. And let me just read this first section of Habakkuk. 
Now, first of all, Habakkuk, the very word Habakkuk means to embrace. I'm tempted to get you up and get you to hug on each other, to embrace. But embrace, think about your Christian journey that really, that's the main thing we're talking about is having a close, intimate relationship with Jesus. That's what it's all about. Everything else is by far secondary. What, and I, our lesson today, um, living in light of eternity. How many know everything, that many things that we, big victories on the football field, in light of eternity, that's really not that big of a deal. Some of you say, oh yeah, that's a big deal. <laughs> this is the first time ever. But I want to encourage you that God wants to embrace you. He wants to hold you. And he wants you to, and for instance, as long as we're in this physical flesh, the scripture says no man, physical man, has seen Jesus and lived in his glorified form. But we want to come into an intimacy with him and be close and near to him. So this is the very book Habakkuk is about, Embrace. And one of the interesting thrusts of this book of Habakkuk, and I, I, as I started looking at this, I said, man, this would be a great study to do the whole thing a period of time on Habakkuk. And maybe the Lord will grant that. But Habakkuk is about going from doubt into worship. Okay? Let's look at this. Habakkuk 2, 1. I will stand my watch. And one of the things about a watch, in this sense, as a guard going out, he has a regular duty. And I want to encourage you in the back of your bulletin to take a regular duty to read your Bible. And you can do many, many plans. But how many know I went to my computer here recently and printed out November and December. And I was so excited I only have one little sheet and one section of a sheet. And I will have completed listening mainly. I listen to um, the Bible being read to me. For another year, I've gone through the Bible. And that's just, that is a, a regular thing that I do where I, God knows that I will eventually, sometimes I run two or three days behind, hello, I'm waiting too much, but eventually I'll catch up, and that way God uses that as an, a powerful tool to get my attention and speak to me. I will stand my watch and sit myself on the rampart. I looked up the what in the world is a rampart? <laughs> it's sort of like a, and I want to encourage you that you have a special place that you, more than any other place that you go, you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It's a place where you can look out. It has the connotation that it's a secure uh, watchtower type thing that you're looking out. And Habakkuk says, I will go there, and I will regularly go there, and I will be in this watchtower watching, waiting. And there's two things he wants to watch to see. How many like to see? You kids, we don't want to talk about Christmas. We want to see it, right? <laughs> and I will listen to what he has to say to me. Two things that God wants to impact. He wants you to see a knowledge that personal and experiential that you personally come into a relationship and know Jesus. Amen, Charles? <laughs> and that you get to begin to listen to him. And I am so convinced that in these last days, he will pour out his spirit like never before on all flesh. And the main byproduct of that is he's going to build a relationship with you. It's going to be so precious. You're protected. You're held in his arms, and he will continually speak into your life. And how many know if God speaks into your life, if you don't share it with someone, you'll pop like a balloon that has too much air in it. And watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Now, I just wanted to give you that as a context to go into. And I started to say, well, in this area of waiting, and I know next week we'll probably have some emphasis on Thanksgiving, but I feel like in the few days of uh, Sundays ahead, Lord willing, I want to share with you a little bit about a biblical definition of waiting. Also, I want to share with you, you got to be careful. 
Because sometimes when you're waiting, you can't do hardly anything else. You're stuck waiting, and you'll get a little idle. The children of Israel were waiting on Moses to come down the mountain, and eventually said, well, he may not come. You remember what they did? One of the greatest blunders in Israel's history, they said, well, everybody give us your jewelry. We'll make us a golden calf. Oh, my goodness, what a mistake. Be careful when you're, and this is one thing I want to share, is, is that it's so important that when you're waiting in line that you don't waste, and Renee brought this one up, take advantage of downtime. How many people know when you're preparing a meal or something? As many things as you can get done because when it, man, when it's time for that Thanksgiving meal, it is too late to take those cranberries and make fresh cranberries. Just open up the can and have the can one. We're going to have some fresh cranberries? <laughs> I want to tell you, there are a world of difference between <laughs> How many know that takes some preparation? And this is one of the things that God is working in you young people's life. So good to see you. <laughs> in your life because he is preparing you for things right now that you have no clue how powerful they can be. And how many times have we seen a professional sports player be thrown into the limelight and he wasn't prepared for that kind of thing? He wasted millions of dollars. How, that's the most amazing thing that these guys would make millions of dollars and you'll see them pawning their Super Bowl ring in two years later. Homeless on the streets. It's just unbelievable. If you're not prepared. So this is a couple things waiting one of the things is that you're just a stranger here on earth. You've got to realize you're just passing through this thing. If you don't realize this, this waiting thing will drive you totally nuts. Don't run out of oil. You remember they had ten virgins? They were waiting for the wedding ceremony. And all of a sudden, do 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 the wedding ceremony. And the, the five of these young ladies said, oh, my goodness, we're running out of oil. How many times? I, I go visit people every once in a while. Hello, is it Pastor Justin? <laughs> Hello, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I do say things. Don't, don't feel rained on. But how, many, how many of you got to be a little prepared? The other thing is, is I um, want to go through a little session about, and I, we visited Pam this morning, and she had, for the first time since her surgery on her heel Friday, she set up this morning. How many know you can, when you're waiting for healing to take place, you got some sources of irritation? I guarantee it. I, 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 I just, how many of you sort of have some sources of irritation? We're going to talk about that, hopefully. I want to spend the time while you're ready. And the other thing, we mentioned it, but I want you, I think it's so important, like the wise virgins, virgins, that you're ready. I get to the line at the grocery store, and I try to tell myself, be ready. Be ready. Let me tell you, friend, I, I encourage you to have two or three extra dollars in your um, billfold purse. And if that person in front of you Oh, my goodness, I don't have enough money for this. Don't even think about it. Pay for that extra pack of Cracker Jacks they're getting. It's a whole lot faster for you to help them out a dollar there for them to figure out what they're going to take back and for them to back it back out of their bill. If you found this out by experience, it helps you if you prepare. <laughs> that would be the best dollar you spent. Someone was telling me just recently they went. To, they were at the fast food place. They drove up, and the person in front of them had paid for their meal. How cool is that? Let me know who that is. I want to try to get in line behind them. <laughs> <coughs> now listen to this one. If you don't catch this as we're going forward, you're going to miss the whole thing. It's worth the wait. God has us in a holding pattern. Scripture says you're not waiting on God. He's waiting on us to a certain degree. He's not slow according to his promises. But let me tell you, it's worth the wait. Every time I've waited upon the Lord, it's been so worth it. Salvation, receiving the fullness of his spirit, growing, and bringing. Think about coming into this fellowship. Isn't this cool? It was well worth the wait. 
right where God wants us at the right time. All right, let's go to Habakkuk 2 and look at this. Now, this is just an introductory into this thing, so just be aware of that. Habakkuk 2 says, Then the Lord answered me, verse 2, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets. As you're waiting, God begins to speak to you about exactly how, how you want it. I hope that you young people in your mind have an idea. Of, Man, I'm going to have a nice car. I'm going to have. I'm going to be a. I'm going to have a good job. Amen. I'm. I'm going. I'm going to struggle as it were, and get through college. I'm going to get a good education. I hope you you young people get a vision of, of of how wonderful it is. A vision, and I believe God pumps you full. You know, there was a long time I was sitting. And I, the Lord was putting in my heart, and I'd see, I'd, I'd dream about being in a position speaking, and feeling God leading me, and having some eagle, beautiful people like you wanting to follow God. And of course, the devil say, "Oh, that would never happen." Take that, you devil! They're happening right now. <laughs> see, if you don't, if you can't see it in your heart, in your spirit, you'll never have it got to see it, okay? He said, write this down so that others can run along with you who reads it. Verse 3, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. I want to go over here and read this, because... The writer of Hebrews, which many feel that Paul wrote that, but I don't take for granted things that the Bible doesn't clearly say. You say, well, he probably don't know what he's talking about, but anyway, that's the way I look at it. But let me read this. The writer of Hebrews came across the same scripture, and it's interesting, the just shall live by faith is, is like foundational. If you're going to walk with Jesus Christ, you, it doesn't matter how hard you try. You can be the best person. In fact, I am convinced if you're a good person, it's a more challenging to live by faith, to trust in the Lord. See, I never had that trouble because I wasn't so good in the beginning. <laughs> you just say, all right, let me read this out of Hebrews because they put this over here. Hebrews 10, 36, write this down. For you have need of endurance. How many know in waiting it takes, it, that, that really tests you. You have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promises. Some people say, if I could only see it, I'd believe it. That will never work in Christ Jesus. You have to believe and then you receive it. For yet a little while, he who is coming will come and will not tarry. The writer of Hebrew uses all these words right along with Habakkuk. But he, Habakkuk is saying, you will receive the vision. Now listen to this. The writer of Hebrew says, you will receive the manifestation, him who comes. Jesus is the fulfillment of everything you're waiting for. And I, the, the fact of the matter, he's coming in fullness. He is going to come, and let me, I, uh, over in Habakkuk 2.14, and I don't have this up there, but it says, the knowledge and the glory of the Lord will fill the earth. I have some little areas of the world that I live in. I need a little bit of more knowledge, and I need a little more glory. Now, some of you, you may not be like me. You have every, all your ducks in a row. Everything's perfect. Every, all your friends and family don't need Jesus. But I have some family, and especially that guy in the mirror, he needs more of Jesus every morning. But this is the fulfillment of the vision that we see here in Hebrews. He who comes is coming and he will come and will not tarry. Hebrews 10, 38. Now, the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. It talks that you need patience to even enter into the fullness of your salvation. All right, I want to give you this in, a, in the Living Bible, these things. Go to the next slide there. I just love this. This is verse 3, and I didn't put the number up there. Habakkuk 2, 3 in the Living Bible. These things I plan won't happen right away. 
how many have you ever talked to someone that says, I tried to uh, church and to live for Jesus, but it didn't work for me? Oh, if I could only show them this series on waiting and how God works. That you wait, you're trustworthy, you keep living by faith, and God is always faithful. If you'll just hang in there. Slowly, steadily, surely, the time approaches when the vision will be fulfilled. If it seems slow, do not despair. For these things will surely come to pass. Just be patient. They will not be overdue a single day. And I just want to share a few things. I love you guys. This is going to help you. I want to share a few things about what I see. And I was praying about this. What do I see as far as a vision for Bethlehem? And I, I want, first of all, the main thing that we need to see is that being in the center and in the perfect will of God. How many know any success, any good thing that we have outside that is way short of the goal? The vision is not fulfilled until when you lay your head down on your pillow at night, you say, Lord, I, I forgive me and I, I, I should have been, I was in that line and I wanted to be ready, but I was just sluggish and I wasn't paying attention and I said this and I didn't do that. I should have witnessed to that person. Now I see it. Just forgive me. Wash, cleanse me by your precious blood. I determined to do better. And just, just speak to me, Lord. The Lord says, son, I, I love you. I'm with you. Hold on. I'm going to make you better in the area of loving others. I'm going to fulfill my the dream for you. This is being in the center of the will. The other thing is, is that Bethlehem can come to a place where we can have respect that when you, how many know there's a few areas that we can improve upon? Hello? It's a powerful thing. We heard testimonies in Sunday school about when, if you're obedient to God, how wonderful it is just to, you receive something and immediately you know exactly where it should go. It's just powerful. Friends, when a body of believers of this size will come together like we're doing, and just like Wednesday night, they're going to meet here at 5 and they'll go out and try to work on help Jesse and Jeff, Justin a little bit, the youth, and um, I'm about to get all my bread and everything in order and go out there. It's a powerful thing when we work together. People's, a part of this is that people's hearts have been changing. Now, now think about a few people. Me. I hope you notice that I'm growing a little bit, not just here. <laughs> but people's hearts and their attitudes are changing. That's powerful. And that's the vision. I, I feel like it's more important to have people growing in Christ than almost any other aspect of the vision. Harmony. The only thing about that is that if you have harmony and you grow, it gets tested. It's a growing dynamic thing that's continually in the front. But what a powerful thing, the harmony we have at Bethlehem. It's powerful. Caring ministry. Can we have too much of that? Think about this. How many know every person in here within the next 12 months, you're going to hit a bump in the road of some sort or another? How many know you want to have people around you that encourage you and help you, speak kind words to you? I'm thinking they have this little thing going around the, um, uh, and it has this penguin. He's standing there, and his little penguin buddy comes up, and he runs up, and they're standing on the edge of the water. He reaches out and pops his penguin into the water. How do you know you, when you're hurting and down, you don't need somebody to throw a little salt on the moon? A caring ministry. A felt, dynamic worship. Now, I'm going to tell you, I envision the day when the interpretive dance almost every Sunday morning in our worship time, they'll be down here. Lord, I lift your name on high. What's with that? Man, do it every Sunday morning. Amen? And let me tell you, I've been in churches here where, where it's, it's the choir. You're not here to be entertained. Hello? This is not a, this is not Las Vegas. We're to entertain Jesus. And I, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm, I'm getting after you a little bit, maybe. 
But I'm going to tell you, I believe when we come in here and we start doing those songs on one, what songs do um, we did this morning? This is the air I breathe. Don't you, I, worship. And I believe you'll, I don't see how in the world you can just sit back, like I'm not in the log. This is the air I breathe. <laughs> oh. Get energized. And I'm, you're saying, well, you're putting on air. Hello. I put on airs every morning. I get laying in bed, I'm going, oh, oh, I don't feel like, and Renee here, popcorn. And for some reason, right around the door in our bedroom, it's goes, the board go crackle, crackle. It takes effort. And I just, anyway, that I see a church, and let me tell you, there's something about worship that has the power to move into the spirit realm. And this is the reason why it's so interesting we understand Satan was over worship because worship has the power. There is warfare in worship. How many of you know we need to do some damage to the enemy's camp? Amen. He's lying. He's discouraging. I am convinced with all my heart, Pamela, that was a design of the devil for that accident on Pamela Friday a week ago or two weeks ago. Now I'm convinced with all my heart the enemy comes in and tries to take things from us. We take authority and take them right back. And God says he restores many times over. All right. One of the things I think is so important is that we, re we have something good going on and we reproduce it. And one of the things is like um, Earl, they're asking him to go to another church and set up the BVD. We got a good thing. We, how do we know we should share that? And I believe there should be so many good things going on. Like one of the things, you know, there's a lot of churches that are struggling. I think it would be good for about 12 of you guys to get together and go to some of these churches and maybe go a little way. We don't want anybody competing against us here in Batesburg. But go there and show them how to do a barbecue. How many know we know how to do a barbecue? <laughs> and in fact, I want, to, I want to encourage you to maybe go over a biracial line and encourage some struggling church. How I many know there's a lot of churches out there if they can clear $5,000 on barbecue, they feel like they can go into heaven. Well, we're so well. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. How many, want to, how many know it's wonderful to be a part of something when God's using it like that? You can't feel any better. To feel like you're being used by God I believe with all my heart, I have a vision that we will constantly, I get so aggravated, I walked in with Pamela, especially Saturday, yesterday, and she was hurting like the dickens. I believe with all my heart, God wants to have a body of believers where they, there's power. Now, I've seen some miracles, but I am not content because, how I many know if you were laying in that hospital and you had your heel all smashed up, You'd like some elders of the church to come and anoint you with oil and, and see some power. Well, hey, sure as I'm standing here, one of these days I'm going to be, oh, the pastor's sick. Power and miracle. Now, one of the things I wrote down on this, I don't want it to be a bunch of crazy, spooky stuff. Now, I don't mind you guys swinging from a chandelier, pulling down the tile and stuff a little bit. <laughs> no, but, you know, how many... How many know the devil likes to come in sometimes and he throws monkey wrenches into things because people get a little crazy? And I, if, 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 you know, I've, I've felt that if, Lord, if we have to roll around on the floor or whatever, I'm willing to do that. But I believe God wants there to be balance and order with power and miracle. I'm just casting vision here, okay? I feel it should be very practical. Practical. They don't just do church to go do something on Sunday morning. And that goes with the caring ministry, praying, and people praying for one another. And let me so stress this, relational. It goes back to having harmony. I, I feel like it's more important for us to be in good relation, caring, open, honesty, loving one another, than have any kind of church success that we may call it. In fact, I heard a group of pastors I was with Tuesday talk about it. Do you want to have attraction? Our relationship, and I believe you. I believe we want to have good music and people come in and enjoy it, and hopefully we can find a good preacher. 
But, but how many of you know it's more important where people will learn to, over time to really love and trust one another? And this is what I believe this vision was, that you cast this vision, and I, I am waiting, and I am believing that we're seeing it, and we're going to see more of it. And my desire is just to bring you into this vision and let you be a vital part of it. In the area of practical, I don't know how to implement this. In fact, we shared at the, a church Thursday night with the men. I believe with all my heart that somehow we want to implement testimonies more at Bethlehem. Now, some of you, maybe you're not supposed to do this, but I'm using this as an illustration, okay? This is how pastors get into trouble. He told us to go out and buy a lottery ticket. No. <laughs> how many know if somebody, one of you won, I don't even want to use the term a lot of you. You inherited $50 million. Amen? You got to get more excited than that about $50 million. Amen. <laughs> I mean, if you come in the church and want somehow, and I've seen it done in several different ways, but I, it, uh, it's easier to do, and this is one reason in small groups, but that you share, you learn how to communicate what God's doing in your life. Now, if it's 50 million, that's kind of easy to do. In fact, we probably couldn't tie you down. You'd, you'd drive your big motor home to church. <laughs> Testimonies. One of the things, if we're going to listen to God and we're going to have vision, it should be leading, cutting edge. Now, you, I, don't, I hope none of you guys went out. A couple of had antique cars, but you went out this morning to your old Ford. Fix or repair daily. You rather push the button? Push the button, hon. How many know? Now, see, I had to park mine on the hill this morning. I went up and pushed it. No, <laughs> I didn't. That's a lie. But how many, God wants you to do things. You know, early on, the church was one of the few places in the community that had life. And so they loved to have church at night. So people would come and I'm talking, we're talking 100 years ago. The, the children come and they say, that's just amazing. How do you know that's not very much amazing now? You're not going to throw anybody with a light bulb. But God wants us to have, have and I, I, for instance, the barbecue, I think it's an excellent illustration. I think the community says, I tell you what, that Bethlehem, they may have some issues, but they got good barbecue. But I believe God wants to do things in our midst where people say, and it's, 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 it's adventurous. It's, set, it's willing to come out of the rut. Let me say that again. It's, and church is not being in a rut. There's nothing sanctimonious about being old fogey. I could really get in trouble there, but anyway. <laughs> I'm trying to keep Earl and Wesley uh, awake by moving around. I just have a few more things. A good, the very next one on my list, I love this. A very good blend of mature, seasoned, experienced people and a good blend of youthful enthusiasm. Amen? We're doing good, aren't we? We're going to get even better. That's basically, and I want to share one other thing about that, is that all this is not about, oh, we come to our church, we have a fancy whatever, or we, we got good barbecue, or, or music's excellent, but come to our church, Help us give glory to God. Amen. That's what it's about. All right, I want to read this verse one more time there. These things I plan won't happen right away. And we're going to talk about waiting. And it's a sad thing if you're sitting here and you don't have a burning desire and vision for a few things. How I many you know that's one of the biggest challenges when a person comes to retirement? They don't have some more things because they thought, Oh, my goodness, I had to get up and go to work for all those years. Let me tell you what, the day you get up and you don't have some, some desire to go up and go and do things, that's a sad day. These things I plan won't happen right away. Slowly, steadily, surely, the time approaches when the vision will be fulfilled. If it seems slow, do not despair, for these things will surely come to pass. Just be patient. They will not be overdue a single day. God is on the verge of doing the greatest move in history of man. He is going to come to planet Earth in some form or fashion as we get to the end time, and it's going to be a dynamic display of his glory. And my question is, 
Will you be a part of it? Come, Donnie, and just Gene. same vision. I would encourage you this week to pray for each other, to pray for our church, and pray that that vision will not only be a vision, but it will become a reality. As the pastor said, it's not going to happen overnight. We all know the story. Rome wasn't built in a day. But I encourage you, pray for each other, be faithful, and give God the glory. I'm going to ask Brother Harold Parrish if he'll dismiss us with prayer. <laughs>